Well, it turns out my evil, less handsome doppelganger, Matt Walsh of The Daily Wire, is up to no good once again, because he was busted trying to lure trans people into participating in an anti-trans propaganda piece of sorts. We don't necessarily know what his documentary entails, but we can assume, given his history, that it will be deeply bigoted and very transphobic. So for more on this, we go to Justin Bargona of The Daily Beast, who explains a far-right podcaster working for The Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's right-wing outlet, has been attempting to dupe dozens of trans people and doctors into participating in an anti-trans documentary under false pretenses, a prominent trans activist revealed this week. Ellie Ehrlich, a writer and co-founder of the organization Trans Student Educational Resources, revealed on Twitter this week that she had been contacted by an associate producer from an organization billing itself as the Gender Unity Project, which according to the producer, was doing a film on the trans community and wanted Ehrlich to participate. According to Ehrlich, however, the situation quickly became suspicious when the producer, who called herself McKenna Lynn, offered to fly the trans activist to different locations for filming, but abruptly canceled. Eventually, the producer settled on bringing Ehrlich to Nashville, where Walsh lives, and The Daily Wire is now headquartered. After doing some digging, Ehrlich discovered that McKenna Lynn was actually McKenna Waters, who was actually an associate producer for The Matt Walsh Show, and has worked on hundreds of the right-wing trolls broadcasts. The Gender Unity Project's deception was further revealed when Ehrlich unearthed the fake group's filing as a limited liability corporation in Colorado. The agent on that registration, the trans activist discovered, was Justin Folk, a right-wing documentarian who had done projects for Walsh and far-right content mill PragerU. So he is kind of pursuing the Project Veritas method where you try to ambush people and you try to do gotcha journalism and you try to take them out of context. Get them to say something that sounds suspicious by just extracting different bits of what they're trying to say, stripping away the context from their broader point. Um, either way, this is predatory. Let's call it what it is. This is predatory. He's trying to lure trans people into participating in a documentary, a documentary that will inevitably try to make them look bad and paint them as the villains. And this is exactly what we'd expect from someone like Matt Walsh. Now, earlier I said that we don't necessarily know what this project will entail, but he kind of hinted at something of this nature about a week or two ago when he talked about waging an all-out assault on gender ideology. So he said this via Twitter in January. This year, I will be waging an all-out assault on gender ideology. We have been working on something that will make the Dr. Phil episode seem tame and boring in comparison. I can't say anything else about it, but it will change the conversation. We can win this battle. Now, I don't know what winning this battle entails. What does that mean? Does that mean that you eradicate trans people from existence? You ban transitions? What's the end game here? I would like for someone like Matt Walsh to explain this, because it seems like you just aren't comfortable with the reality that trans people exist, but they have always existed and they will continue to exist regardless of the legal persecution that folks like you push. So I don't know what that means, but either way, this is somebody who is a bad actor. He's predatory and he's obsessed with trans people. And the reason why he's obsessed with trans people is because they are a cash cow to him. He doesn't care about their suffering. He doesn't care about their lives. He doesn't care about understanding them. He makes money off of this anti-trans grift because, you know, preying on anti-trans hysteria right now is very lucrative. So he even became a bestseller on Amazon by publishing an anti-trans children's book. And here's what he said about that on the Laura Ingram show on Fox News. Uh, I think people are, are buying the book because we need a little bit of sanity in, in our culture and especially in children's books. I mean, any, any parent, I'm a parent myself, and we know that you go to the children's section at Barnes & Noble, you look at all the titles, it's like being at, a, at an Antifa rally or something with all the, just the left-wing propaganda, and to have something that's a response to that, um, I think is resonating with people. And by the way, I should mention that Amazon, they did this on their own. They listed it as an LGBT book, and right now, currently, for the last few days, I've had the top seller. Selling, uh, not just one of the top-selling books on Amazon, but the, one of the top-selling or the top-selling LGBT book. So I am an LGBT author, and I'm, you know, I think one of the leading LGBT voices in the country right now, according to Amazon, and I, I embrace that. <laughs> I mean, it's clear that this is all a game to him. He doesn't care that his actions are making the lives of trans people worse. He doesn't care that he is helping to, you know, further demonize this already marginalized community. To him, it's all just fun and games, and he's also making some money off of them. He says, if you go to the Barnes & Noble's uh, children's section and you look at the titles, it looks like an Antifa rally. What does that even mean? Now, he's being facetious, but, you know, he, he doesn't care. He doesn't have a core political ideology. 
He just wants to cash in on what right now is the current political rage, which is uh, demonizing trans people. It works for him because bigotry against trans people is so prominent right now. 2021 was one of the most transphobic years, legislatively speaking, with hundreds of pieces of anti-trans legislation being introduced in state legislatures across the country. And this graph that you're seeing was from April of 2021. I'd argue that a lot more pieces of legislation were uh, produced as the year went on, although I haven't seen an updated chart. And all of this anti-trans bigotry is correlated with violence against trans and non-binary people. In 2021 alone, 50 for trans and non-binary people have died violently, mostly trans women of color, and violence against this community will continue so long as predators like Matt Walsh demonize them and make money off of demonizing them. And we haven't even gotten to the high risk of suicide among trans and non-binary youth compared to their cis peers. I mean, this community is under attack, and he thinks it's funny to make their lives miserable. Because we accept transphobia and bigotry against the LGBTQ plus community in this country, he can actually just outright say, I'm waging an assault on gender ideology, which we all know is a synonym for trans people. And, you know, it, nobody really bats an eye, but it's disgusting. Think about how morally depraved our country is. We have literally made it so we can commodify hate in this country. Like, you can actually make money by hating and preying on marginalized groups. How sick is that? How twisted is that? It's just, it's really disgusting. But again, he couldn't care less. He doesn't care that suicide rates among trans and non-binary youth is higher than their cis peers. He doesn't care that violence against trans women has increased over the years. He could not care less. All he cares about is cultivating hatred against this community because it makes him money. He gets invited to Fox News. He's basically made his career off of anti-trans bigotry, so why would he stop now? It's just important that people who know better call him out and they speak out against what he's doing because this is wrong. And so long as we as a society accept transphobia and bigotry and allow this to happen, people like him, bad actors, predators, will continue to do this, continue to gin up hatred and fear over this community.